All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, I'm Jennifer Lasanti, the Director of Sales at Beer and Purvis. Thank you very much for participating in today's webinar. We know the fourth quarter is the busiest time of the year for you professionally, and this year we have the complexities of 2020, so your time is more precious than ever. We have this annual webinar because at the beginning of each year is when the carriers make adjustments to their portfolios because they're given new actual value calculators. Today's presentation it consolidates all the information for 2021. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is on mute, but we welcome questions. Just type them in the presentation and I will review them in the end. If we don't have time to get to all of them during today's webinar, we will circle back to you and you can always reach out to your BNP sales team as well. We will be sending out a copy of the presentation and a recording. Today's agenda will be going over the small group medical changes, ancillary changes, and large group medical. Then we'll do some quick reminders because uh, we know what you're, you know what you're doing. However, it is a crazy time in the fourth quarter and for January, and so I just want to remind you to keep you out of trouble. And we'll of course do the question and answers as I mentioned. So some overall trends that we're seeing for 2021 are the good news for persistency is that the renewals seem to be very low again. Uh, this is the third year in a, in a row that you'll see low trends. In addition to that, we're seeing carriers come out with high deductible plans that you might think are HSA. However, they're not. They're just high, high deductible plans. However, they provide first dollar benefits for like office visits and generic drugs. You also see with most carriers that they also are developing these very strategic relationships with providers. So it's a win-win for everyone. The members get a good premium. The carriers uh, win against Kaiser as well as the providers win against Kaiser as well. And the last trend we're noticing in 2021 is that the ancillary renewal rate passes are occurring because of COVID. Uh, utilization was minimal in 2020, as we know, and so they're just passing on that over to the groups and members. So starting with that now, you'll notice that they are very competitive on bronze level plants actually throughout the state of California. And you may or may not have sold much Aetna previously or in recent years, but do pay attention on when you're marketing because they're gonna pop up. And the good news is they're coming back to small group in California. They're rehiring staff, et cetera, throughout the state. So they're here to play again. So uh, don't discount Aetna at all. You'll see that the annual rate trends are pretty minimal. Um, the PPO plan in Northern California is on the higher side than you're going to see with all the carriers today, but the others are really between three to five percent. Now, when we are talking about uh, renewals, I'm going to be talking about the rates, the, the book rates that the carriers come out with. We all get older, unfortunately, every year. So at the group's renewal, you know that everyone's going to probably be migrating to a different age bracket. So if I was 48 at the last renewal, I'm going to be 49 at this year's renewal. I'm unfortunately going to be looking at the 49 year old rate, but I was paying for the 48 year old. In addition to if I have overage dependents, uh, they get hit higher on the rate trends once you become 15 year old to higher. And so that's just kind of some of the things you're going to see because we're talking about pretty low trends and then you get the renewal and you're saying, wait, Jennifer said it was 3% and really is 7%, something to that effect. Now, as I mentioned, all the carriers get actual real value calculators. So Aetna is rolling out three new plans. So you'll see those listed here. The good news is since Aetna is coming back to the small group market in California, that they have increased the number of full network HMO plans that they're going to sell in 2021. In 2020, they only sold three full network HMO plans, but in 2021, they're going to offer seven. Then, as I mentioned, one of the trends we're seeing is that the carriers are partnering up with certain providers to provide uh, discounted rates to the groups and members and to help them as well. And so you're going to see that Aetna has a whole health care plan designs. It's more for Southern California, but you'll see those members can save anywhere from 15 to 25 percent over their full network plan offerings. You probably all know that Aetna was purchased by CBS, so they're going to start rolling out um, advantages because of that partnership. And Aetna's creating these CVS health hubs, which is kind of like primary care visits. Um, it's not just primary care visits, but it's more wellness-based, et cetera. They're starting with some and throughout the state, and they're going to be adding a lot more. So just something you're going to be seeing more of is these CVS health hubs through Aetna in particular. Aetna's got more flexible um, as far as some underwriting guidelines, but one thing to be aware of is 
for groups of six plus, they were only requiring just the paperwork. They were not requiring a D9C or prior care bill. As of, as of now, actually, they're now requiring just a prior care bill, not a D9C as six plus enrolled, but previously they didn't even want the bill, but now they do. So be aware of that. And then Aetna for a long time was pretty strict on new business deadlines. And since we'll probably be selling Aetna now, I want to make sure that everyone knows they're more in line with all the other carriers. So you'll see there that they want the new business paperwork by the fifth of the effective month. So if you're selling for you know, January 1st, they want it by January 5th. And then all the carriers have great value adds. Aetna in particular has a relationship with Apple Watch. And so their members have a program called the Attain Apple Watch Program. And everyone's got wellness programs, but this is more of a customizable to the specific member based on their health goals or what they need to achieve or what they want to uh, take care of as far as their wellness needs. So be aware of that. Moving on to Anthem. So the first thing here you'll see is Anthem is competitive in certain areas throughout the state of California that are listed. The renewals you're going to see book rate over book rate is actually a negative. Uh, almost negative 1% for the PPO and negative 6% for HMOs. That's a statewide average. Again, you have to take into those considerations what I mentioned before. But for example, Santa Clara has a lot of membership in the Bay Area. And when you look at the full network PPO plans in Santa Clara, Anthem is actually the most competitive carrier everywhere except for that bronze Aetna plan that I was refer referencing to. And if you can see over here to the far right, we have parentheses. And in that parentheses is a number. And for example, this one here, this gold $250 PPO plan, it says almost 7%. And what this means is that Anthem's plan design is about 7% less expensive than the next closest plan design in that uh, metallic deductible level. All right, Anthem did make a lot of changes for 2021. One of the changes they did is they're going to be offering um, in their most of the plan designs that you sell they're non-shop plans. You might think, well, Anthem's not in the shop. What are you talking about? All carriers, whether or not they participate in the shop, have to offer at least one metallic plan from each um, shop plan design. So Anthem does offer four plans that are mirrored plans to the shop. And that I'm not talking about those plans right now. We're going to talk about it in one second. Um, but for those non-shop plans for 2021, what they're doing is they're going to have an RX cheer, choice tiered program. What that means is if your member goes to certain pharmacies, they're going to save money over other pharmacies. So if I'm with Anthem and I happen to go to CVS, Target, et cetera, my co-pays are going to be less than if I went to Walgreens or Rite Aid. Walgreens and Rite Aid cost more. So if I'm not going there, why should I have to pay as much if I'm going to CVS or Target? So it's a way to help the member save money um, especially if they're not going to more expensive providers. So again, that's the RX tiered choice. And you're going to see on the plan designs that this is part of the 2021 Anthem plan design. And most PPO plans have three columns over here. I'm sorry, have two columns over here to the right. You'll see this Anthem's plan summary has two, sorry, three. I'm getting mixed up on my numbers in this afternoon. Um, so they have three. And level one is this area here, and these are lower copays. So it's a $5 copay for generic drug if I go to CVS or Target. If I go to Walgreens or Rite Aid, I'm going to pay $10 more. I can still go there. I'm just going to pay a little more. So I save money if I stay in these pharmacies here. So getting lots of questions about that. The other item here is these, um, as I referenced, Anthem does have plans that are mirrored plan designs. They're listed here. You'll notice they're all select PPO network plan designs. So you, you may not sell these plans at all. Maybe that's another reason why you weren't familiar with them. If you happen to sell these plan designs listed here, they do exclude Walgreens completely. So these members cannot go to Walgreens for the prescription drugs. It would be considered out of network versus in network. Another item that they're doing is they have an opt out program for home delivery. We all know because we're in the industry that you save time and money if you take routine medication. So they have to take every day for every month. Um, might as well save yourself time and money and have that delivered to your house through the carrier's mail order program. So what Anthem is going to do is try to educate members more and say, hey, um, you can go to your retail pharmacy if you want to, but you have to opt out in order to do so. So members can go to their retail pharmacy down the street for three courtesy fills, but by the fourth one, they'll be switched automatically to the home delivery for this mail order program. 
unless they opt out. Again, you can opt out. There's no penalty to do so. It's just a matter of contacting Anthem and choosing that. All right, getting lots of questions about this as well. Anthem is rolling out some plan designs, and they have WH in the plan title. And everyone's like, what's WH? Well, WH is, stands for whole health. There's seven plan designs that include this whole health WH. And what it really means is it's enhanced dental and vision. It's enhanced for the pediatric members because there's actually a lower deductible versus having to pay the higher medical deductible for pediatric dental and vision benefits. And these medical plans are now going to include dental and vision for adults. So we don't have really any other plans that cover dental and vision on the medical plan. The Anthem 7 Whole Health PPO plan designs do. As a result, the premium's a little higher than these exact same plan designs without WH in their title that don't include the adult dental and vision by about three to 6%. But these are plan, really nice plans for those smaller groups, one to nine groups that just wanna make it simple, um, I sign up for my medical plan, I get basic, you know, dental and vision benefits, I get one bill, one ID card, et cetera, but it's just all within the medical plan. The, the employer doesn't have to choose the medical plan, the dental plan, the vision plan, it's all in one. All right, some other plans that Anthem's rolling out with are the um, preventative Rx plan. So you're gonna see there's a HSA plan that says Prev Rx against preventative Rx, and what that means is in 2020, there was um, an option for carriers to expand the, the list of drugs that were considered preventive, so meaning you didn't have to pay anything for those drugs. Anthem is now choosing on this plan design only to waive the deductible, and you have co-pays for these first dollar, I'm sorry, for these certain preventative drugs. What they include are these types of um, medical conditions, asthma, blood clots, et cetera, listed here. So again, HSA plan, Prevorex just means they get more drugs covered without having to meet that HSA deductible. And the last plan design that Anthem's rolling out is a bronze PPO plan. It is uh, one of those high deductible plans, $7,300 deductible, but you'll see this is not an HSA plan. And what's nice about it is if, you know, if you're a healthy member or if you're younger and really you just need insurance, um, you know, in case something random happens, but you really never use it, except for maybe you know going to your doctor once a year or getting maybe a generic drug once in a while, this is the plan for you. So you have unlimited co-pays for office visits because some of these high deductible plans used to have like, you can go to the doctor for three times at a copay and that was all. Now this plan specifically is unlimited. And then they do get the Rx deductibles way for those generic tier one drugs. All right, all the other carriers have been doing this for quite a while now. Anthem is joining in with all the other carriers. And what this is, is it's called site of service benefits. Kind of simply put, hopefully, is that if you have certain outpatient services like ambulatory surgery center, you get a knee surgery, um, et cetera, what happens is depending on the provider you go to in network again, you may or may not uh, get a discount. So really, if you're having knee surgery and the outpatient surgery center you go to is owned by a hospital, you're going to pay more than if it was a freestanding surgery center. Same thing with preferred reference labs. Um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit too. United's doing the same thing where now Anthem for 2021 is going to have preferred reference labs, aka Quest and LabCorp. You're going to save money if you go there, which is great because most members already go there. And so what happens if you see on this benefits center over here, if I go to Quest or LabCorp, those re are reference labs, I actually pay nothing for my blood work. I still have other providers I can go to if I choose to. And then on this specific plan design, I'm just going to pay $10 for my blood work versus nothing if I went to LabCorp and Quest. And then if I had that surgery center again, it just depends on if it's owned by a hospital or not. You're going to see on HMOs, you're going to have a lower cost share if it's not owned by a hospital. And on PPO plans, I'm just gonna have an additional copay. And this is something that the other carriers have been doing quite a while. Again, this is just something Anthem's starting to do. Still talking on the Anthem, and this is just a quick reminder, there's actually legislation that came out that said, hey, if you have telehealth, and what's gonna happen is that um, if you go to telehealth and you see a specialist, cardiologist, dermatologist, et cetera, you're just gonna pay the specialist copay versus a primary care copay. So be aware of that. And then Life Health Online, actually with Anthem, hopefully you know this is their telemed program and they do have a behavioral health part of that and that is not going away. 
but they are removing, they actually were paying for chat features with um, a therapist. That is going to go away as of 2021. Again, you can still have behavioral health through Life Health Online, it's just not through texting. You actually have to talk to them. And then the last thing here is that with, uh, again, the concept of that high deductible plan, with a priority select HMO, they're going to offer Life Health Online at no charge for the first 12 office visits, and then they're going to pay a $5 copay. This is something Anthem was doing on other high deductible plans previously. All right, the last slide on Anthem before we move on to new carrier. Um, this is very important if you get paid via commission. Um, for the month of December only, if you sell a group with Anthem and it has 10 plus enrolled, they're going to pay you 7% commission for the life of that case. For all the other months, they've been doing this since July and they're paying continue through January. If you have a group of 10 plus enrolled, they're gonna pay you 6% commission, which standard in the industry right now for small group is five. So again, you get 6% for July through um, January of 2021, but just for the month of December is 7%. But once you sell that new piece of business, it does stay that commission for the life of that case. Another thing that Anthem has been doing for a little bit since October, um, and it's continuing through March 15th, is they have been hesitant to sell multiple networks at the same time. Right now they're doing so. So you can either, you can have three networks total. You can pick two PPO networks, so the prudent buyer and select PPO, for example, alongside one HMO network, or two HMO networks, say the California Care full HMO network and the select HMO network alongside one PPO. So that's something to pay attention to. And then Anthem has increased or enhanced rather their member tools. So they have a new member app called Sydney. They actually have two versions, one's COVID specific and one's just their regular member app. Um, so enhance that, they've done that a while ago. And then again, we list all the um, value adds for all the carriers. The one I'll talk about here is, because this has been coming up quite a bit with COVID, is the fact that Anthem includes in all their medical plans, a free EAP program. Very useful now in this wonderful, crazy, stressful time we live. All right, now I'm changing uh, to California Choice, and I'm gonna say something before I forget, because it was just, um, the preview was given to me today. We can actually announce it tomorrow. You will not be seeing any glass on this, but your BNP sales rep will probably be reaching out to you to let you know that as of January 2021, you will now be able to move groups to California Choice at any Kaiser anniversary date. So what I mean by that is that the group's currently with Kaiser. They can move from Kaiser Direct to Cal Choice anytime during the year previous to January 2021, it had to be at the Kaiser anniversary date. You could not move off the Kaiser anniversary date to Cal Choice. So that was just kind of previewed to me today. It's officially, we can announce it tomorrow. You won't see a blast on that, but FYI. So moving on to the regular stuff that has been announced already. And the first thing is, as I said, they've got new actual value calculators. They negotiate with their carriers every year. So you're going to see a bunch of different plans offered through CalChoice, 19 new medical plans through CalChoice. The breakdown is here. The majority is there's four Kaiser plans that are new to the already offer, the plans they offered, and there's an 11 additional UHC plans. So wide variety there. If you happen to be in the kind of the wine country where Western Health Advantage is available, they are now offering a very rich uh, plan design through CalChoice. So just be aware, this is going to be 100% for inpatient hospital services. Um, it's a Western Health Advantage plan through CalChoice. They are just continuing seven plan designs. It's just the nature of this time of year through those actual value calculators. And CalChoice will take a group of six plus enrolled with just a prior carrier bill. They used to require it to match within 10% of enrollment. Um, so it was real quick to off, or request the prior carrier bill and then find out that you had to get the D9C anyway. They've removed that, so just be aware. And this is really exciting, and this is in play for December of January, I'm sorry, December of 2020. And this is now that California Choice will offer all four metallic tiers at one time. So you can offer the platinum with the bronze or any combination, but this is effective December. One thing that is coming up quite a bit, especially for groups on renewal, uh, starting October of this year is California Choice for out-of-state members. They must enroll on the Anthem Full Network Prudent Buyer PPO plan. So it's great because as of July, Cal Choice rolled out the Anthem Full Network PPO plans, um, which we specifically were very happy about. But 
as a result, any out-of-state employee does need to enroll in that Anthem Full Network PPO plan. So uh, before they could have enrolled in the Select PPO, and now they need to move to the uh, Full Network Anthem PPO plan. So that's hitting renewals right now. It's quite a topic. And we have the value adds, as I referenced before. Okay, so brand new carrier to market, uh, still not quite official, but hopefully any moment now. Um, there is a brand new carrier coming to the Bay Area, and it's going to be Cigna plus Oscar. It's not Cigna, it's not Oscar, it's Cigna plus Oscar. Uh, you actually do need to sign up a new broker appointment specifically for this carrier, even if you're already a Cigna broker or an Oscar broker. It's supposed to be rolling out January 2021. They are still negotiating with the Department of Insurance, and that's what they're waiting on to, to be able to quote and sell. But in hopes that they do get that here approved here very quickly, I just want to explain the product. And what this is, is it's not Oscar renting the Cigna network. It's actually a joint venture. So it's Cigna's money is actually invested in this product as well. So I think that you're gonna find a better security platform um, than what other ventures have done before. What happens is, again, it's a Bay Area product. So in the Bay Area, with these counties listed here, 50% of the group must be enrolled in these counties. So it was 70%, but now that they're launching for January, is they dropped the 70% to 50%. As far as you selling alongside Kaiser, they're very flexible. They actually really just need three people to enroll with Cigna plus Oscar and then 60% can be enrolled with Kaiser and Cigna plus Oscar combined to meet their participation rules. They will allow three metallic plans and any choice. So you can put the platinum with the bronze, but you just have to pick three. And what's nice is they allow both networks. So if I offer the platinum plan design, I can offer it on the full and the, the smaller Cigna network. So that really counts for two plan offerings there. And if I offer a bronze offering on the larger and the you know the smaller Cigna network that's two more plans so I can get up to six plans offered to this group um, this is different from when they were first trying to roll this product out for December and this is with groups of seven plus enrolling they will take the prior care bill instead of the D9C as you as you've heard me mention before it was actually six plus with most carriers Cigna plus Oscars can be seven plus enrolling um, the niche with the Oscar part of the Cigna plus Oscar is that it's very unique, very concierge, a lot of member services, tools, et cetera, that are part of this whole insurance program. So that's the niche of why you'd be selling Cigna plus Oscar. They are EPO plans, but it does not require a PCP um, to be chosen and no referrals are required. But that means you're either in network or it's not covered at all. We've got their value adds, which I mentioned is uh, you've got a concierge team, a lot of useful um, tools, especially with that Sigma Plus Oscar backing. All right, covered California for small business. You can see that the average trend is, is uh, very low. It's 1.5%. Um, as I mentioned, it's pretty standard with everybody. The nice thing with covered California is now that Kaiser has bringing back their zero deductible gold HMO plan, which was their number one selling plan in 2019. It went away in 2020. It's coming back for 2021. So Covery California is going to have that Kaiser zero deductible gold HMO plan. They're getting rid of the three plans, as you see here. And then another thing that we actually can't really blast, but we're getting a lot of traction with because uh, this has always been a topic in California. Um, but with COVID and more and more employees are moving outside the state of California, this is coming up even more. So what I'm referencing is if you have a group we typically have to have 51% eligible living in California to offer our medical carriers. We'll cover California announced this year, uh, in the latter part of the year, that now as long as the principal executive office is in California, we can write that group. Their the out of state employees will get the Blue Shield PPO full network coverage. And um, the, employee, the employees in California, of course, can get Kaiser, Health Net, Blue Shield as well, et cetera. So you do need to contact us because we do need to verify that the principal executive office is in California. We can give that go ahead to you and then um, sell away. But we're getting lots of traction with that. Not new, but quick reminders. Again, Covered California has always had that full network PPO through Blue Shield, as I referenced. Um, and the Kaiser rates through Covered California, ironically, are less than Kaiser Direct because they do not include pediatric dental. And Covered California was the one place we had where 
You could move to covered California off the Kaiser renewal, but as I referenced now, January, that's gonna be with Kaiser, CalChoice, and Covered California. Everyone can move anywhere. It doesn't have to be on the group's anniversary date. And Covered California, one knock on them initially is they didn't have a lot of good tools for either the group or the broker, but in 2020, hopefully you've seen, they did roll out a new uh, broker portal, which actually allows you to do ads, deletes, terms on there. All right, switching up, going to HealthNet. So HealthNet is still predominantly in Southern California. Um, we'll talk about large group HealthNet in a little bit, and which has a Bay Area focus, but in HealthNet small group, um, I think you're start seeing a lot of HealthNet, but for your Southern California groups. And it's not just the narrow network HMO plans that HealthNet's been known for, the competitive in PPO plans, as you see, the gold and silver PPO plans are very competitive. The very low renewal increase, as with trend with everyone. Here's some new plan designs with HealthNet. But what I wanna focus on for your Southern California groups is based on trend, what's actually going on there is you can sell the HealthNet full network HMO plan design, and it actually matches the premium for the smaller, narrow full care HMO network. So you're basically getting more doctors for the same price as the whole care network, which actually has less doctors. So just be aware of that, that's certain regions, but definitely a niche for health map, just a better value. Two things they've been doing for a while here is for health net groups, if you're selling just HMO and you have six plus enrolled, they're very lenient. They don't need a prior care bill. They don't need a D9C. They just need the paperwork. And with Salud package, they're very popular. Um, Salud is that uh, cross coverage with Mexico and the US. And for the, these groups, if you're just selling the Salud plans, HealthNet could have a 100 life group. You're just writing two with Salud and the other 98 can enroll wherever. And they don't need waivers from those other 98. They just need applications from the two enrolling with Salud with HealthNet. So definitely a niche there. Um, HealthNet, one big thing they're talking about for 2021 is the fact that their telehealth is kind of getting put on steroids a little bit. They're going to use a new vendor called Babylon Health. The copays will match in-person visits. So whether you're telehealth or in-person, it's the same. And there's a lot of additional features to this telehealth, um, a lot of wellness programs, et cetera. So be aware, it's not just telehealth, there's more to it. And a new feature that HealthNet's doing that's kind of common in the industry is HealthNet also wants to sell their ancillary. And if you sell their ancillary, you can get a discount on the ancillary lines of coverage, 5% off each ancillary line. And this is through March of 2021. So you don't get 5% off the medical, unfortunately, because you can't do that in small group, but you get 5% off each ancillary line with HealthNet. Moving to Kaiser. So we're very happy to have Kaiser as a carrier. And um, you can see Kaiser's predominantly always been very strong and low renewals, and they continue to have those. As I referenced under Covered California, Kaiser is bringing back that their most popular plan, that zero gold HMO deductible plan for 2021. They're discontinuing the gold $500 plan that they've rolled out in 2020. And this is brand new, um, I think of last week. Now Kaiser, if you have a group of six plus eligible, it was six plus enrolled, but now it's six plus eligible, we do not need a D9C or a prior carrier bill for those groups. So it just makes it easier to get through underwriting, especially for December and January when there's so many groups being processed at once. Uh, we appreciate that when the carriers make it easy on us, right? All right, this is also brand new as of last night. Um, so Kaiser is now going to accept an enrollment census from groups. Be aware there is an arbitration letter that the employees must be given and they should sign or they need to sign, but you keep that on file. You just give us a census and we'll submit that to Kaiser. So Kaiser again is just making it easier to get the groups processed quickly. Something else that they just announced about a week ago is Kaiser will now accept individual coverage as a valid waiver. So it doesn't hurt the group's participation. Kaiser still is the basically one of two carriers that has grandfather plans. Um, grandfather plans typically can't change. However, HSA plans are required to change. So um, since we're moving into a new year, the Kaiser grandfathered HSA deductible will increase from 2,800 to 3,000. And the last thing for Kaiser on this slide is the fact that uh, they too are lenient for those situations where you've got more employees outside California than in. The group has to be 1 to 100 eligible, but as long as the group is filed to do business in the state of California, 
we can write the employees in California with Kaiser. You'd have to go find a different carrier for the employees outside of Kaiser, or sorry, California, but we can write those California folks, which is a nice feature. All right, some quick reminders for Kaiser. Um, as I referenced, you can currently move groups from Cover California Small Business to Kaiser off the group's anniversary. And then again in January, you'll be able to throw that uh, couchways in that same mix. They've been enhancing their broker portal as well, so you can manage your renewals online. You know, the more you can do online and not have to uh, wait for the carriers, the better, especially when they all get busy at the same time. Especially from COVID, it was nice that Kaiser was rolling out more additional features for their members. So they've been giving that calm meditation app free to their members, along with My Strength, which has also has some additional mental health features. Class Pass is nice because um, your gym might be closed or you might not be comfortable going to the gym, but you still definitely need to exercise for your health and mental health. And so they have fitness classes that they can have online. So that's very nice. This is from 2020, but it's such a big deal. We want to keep it on here and remind you that now all the Kaiser ACA plans do cover that supplemental DME. So they do cover that. Uh, every seems like everyone needs a CPAP machine for um, oxygen. It's very important in life. And now that's all covered on all the Kaiser ACA plans. And you know Kaiser has a lot of great number of value adds. All right, switching carriers again to United Healthcare. So with United Healthcare, you can see here we have listed where they're going to be very competitive that first quarter of 2021. Here's average renewals, which kind of seems consistent with everyone else. Um, however, what is unique to United is they had a focused narrow network HMO and they are removing that network completely starting in 2021. So that will affect the group at renewal. And what happens is that anyone that was on a focus HMO network will be moved to the Advantage or Harmony network. And um, those are larger, the Advantage is a larger uh, network over focus. They are also eliminating all bronze HMO plans. United Healthcare in particular could not figure out how to keep a bronze HMO plan offering when they got the new actual value calculator. Um, per, per ACA. Other carriers have, but United couldn't put their plans, so just be aware. And then this is particular, or this is not particular with United, all carriers have to do this. Uh, what this is referencing is that when a carrier uh, removes a specific plan design, they do have to send discontinuation letters to members, and those were sent on October 1st. We usually get lots of questions in particular on United's uh, verbiage, but it just means that hey, your specific plan design will be changing anniversary. You still have coverage with United using to pick a different plan or take the migrated one. All right, with United Healthcare, in particular in the BA area, they have one of the strategic partnerships with certain providers and the providers are part of the Canopy program. So Canopy includes John Muir in the East Bay of San Francisco. It includes UCSF, it includes the uh, Big Marin provider, Skippa, things like that. So any Canopy provider, um, United has had a great partnership with them for a while on the HMO side, but in 2021, they're gonna be rolling out EPO plan designs because uh, in particular in the Bay Area, workers were telling United, hey, we don't sell too much HMO, uh, we like the concept, we like the price, but uh, we want that EPO plan design. So be aware of that. And those are called, called doctor's plans. And again, that's an EPO using the canopy provider in Northern California. Now, United Healthcare continues on having certain portfolios you sell. They are talking about only having two portfolios for 2021. Technically, however, they have four, so I don't wanna confuse people. Um, what is nice in 2021 is they only have four, not five. And it's definitely more logical based on geography. So if you're in Southern California, you're going to sell the United Healthcare um, Choice Simplified One portfolio. And the reason why is you're going to see that it offers all of their narrow network HMOs, including their full HMO network. So a lot of HMO networks, which isn't too important in Southern in Northern California, but extremely important in Southern California. It includes both PPO networks, so plus the full one and the smaller core one. Now, Choice Simplified 2 is what you're gonna be selling if you're in Northern California. And the reason is, is because we don't sell the narrow network, so we don't need those in here. And so it has our full and our narrow HMOs, as well as the two PPO offerings. And then we've got Northern California is gonna have a separate offering as well, it's three. And if you want that doctor's plan through Canopy I referenced up here, you're gonna find it in Choice Simplified 3 portfolio. 
The last portfolio is the state mandated plans. Again, United is not in the shop, but they have to offer those state mandated shop plans and where they put them is right here in the choice simplified for, for portfolio. So one thing that comes up a lot with United is at the group's renewal because United does make changes to these choice simplified offerings every year is they may move from one offering, one portfolio to another at renewal and that can be confusing to people. So for example, in 2020, we were telling all their Northern California brokers, you want to sell choice simplified three to your UHC groups. But in 2021, you're probably going to be selling Choice Simplified 2. So just a heads up on that. United is going to be mapping by renewals. All right, with United Healthcare, um, they are going to offer virtual visits of telehealth on most plans for $0 copay. Uh, United is well known for their HSA. And the reason why is that they call it Motion HSA. And it allows employees and their spouses, if they choose, to do certain fitness wellness features and earn money to knock down their HSA deductible. So if the employee takes 10,000 steps a, you know, a day, if they move at a certain tenacity and frequency, then they can earn up to $3 a day from United and United will accrue that against the HSA deductible. So basically, I, if I do $3 a day all year long, I can earn $1,095 at UHC will subtract off my high HSA deductible plan. So very nice feature. All the carriers have broker bonus programs. The only reason why we have United's called out on this slide is because it's the only one that I'm aware of that actually is going to pay you at renewal. And this is brand new. So if you sell the group in 2021, they're going to pay you $100 per employee. And when you renew the group in 2022 and 2023, they will pay you again. So that's a unique feature to them. All right, in 2020, UHC started doing this and they're going to continue to do this in 2021, um, but on certain plan designs. So what I'm referencing is UHC came out also like Anthem and has those preferred relationships with certain labs, Quest, LabCorp, same labs. If you happen to go to those labs, you're gonna save money with United, but on the Platinum PPO plans in 2021, it was all the PPO plans previously and now it's unique to the Platinum PPO plans. The gold PPO plans are going to have what Anthem was calling site of service, UHC calls place of service, and that's that concept, depending on where you go, that think of that outpatient knee surgery. If it's owned by a hospital, you're probably going to pay more than if it's a freestanding surgery center, just because it costs less, so they're going to pass that savings on to the member. All right, a couple of reminders for United. They have offered that primary advantage plan for a while now. This is that concept of it's a high deductible plan, but has first dollar coverage. It is not HSA as a result. Um, United in 2020 rolled out one formulary for HMO and PPO plans, so it's, it's easier to work with, so that's nice. As I said, UHC's had great relationships with those Bay Area canopy providers. They've been offering very competitive HMO rates, uh, very competitive to Kaiser. And then what we do love about United, again, we like to make life easy for ourselves. And what United does is for those larger groups, they don't want to nickel and dime you. If you have 10 plus eligible, not enrolled, 10 plus eligible, you just have to give them a form completed versus dig up the D9C or the prior care bill. It just helps us get through underwriting faster. And then of course, United is a great national carrier with a lot of, of value adds for members. Uh, the most popular one is that fitness reimbursement, kind of like that HSA concept I was mentioning earlier. If a member works out 12 times in a month, they can earn up to $20 for themselves. And if their spouse does it as well, they can get $20 a month for working out 12 times. Now, again, you probably aren't going to the gym right now in the situation, um, might be limited. And so they've converted that to you just working out on your, your own and logging that, you can still earn that money. So that was all the information on the small group medical changes for 2021. I'm gonna pivot a little bit here and talk about the special open window. Yes, it's that time of year. So what the special open window is, is, is per ACA, this is a one time a year where groups can enroll with the carrier and the carrier must take them even if they're not uh, complying with the carrier's participation or contribution rules. However, it does truly have to be a small group, so they have to be 1 to 100 eligibles. It is lenient, but remember, they want all the paperwork, so you can have a 100 life group, one's enrolling, 99 are waiving, and that's fine, but you have to give 99 declinations. So you have to account for all eligibles and enrolling. We have a lot of information on the slide. Basically what we wanna call out is some carriers 
will say this does not apply. And again, this is you're enrolling between specifically November 15th to December 15th for one one effective date only. Um, some carriers say, hey, if you're offering Kaiser alongside of us, this rule does not apply at all. What we want to call out is with Covered California Small Business, they're the friendliest carrier in the situation. And the reason is you can sell Kaiser within Covered California, like we always do, or if you have a group and for some reason they want to keep Kaiser Direct and you want to offer this special open window through Covered California alongside, you can do so. Most other carriers would say you can't, and um, they will renew the group. Other carriers like United says, hey, we don't mind if you coexist along Kaiser with us. You just have to get our five enrolled in California like usual. Um, but they say, hey, we're probably going to audit these groups of renewal. We have to take you initially, but we might not keep you. So this is always a big topic every year. It's that time of year again. No major changes from last year, but just want to call out some carriers say it doesn't apply if you're offering alongside Kaiser. So just give us a call. And we can walk you through it. Okay, rates, commissions, and bonuses. So we are we have been quoting now for a little bit. All of our 2021 medical carriers, so send those RFPs over if you haven't already. We're happy to help you and take that legwork off uh, your desk. And the only one we're waiting on, as I referenced, was Cigna Plus Oscar. So we'll let you know as soon as that's available. Uh, there's been no changes to the small group medical commissions, but just remember Anthem is paying you 7% um, for the month of December for 10 plus enrolled and 6% for January of 2021. And everyone has bonuses, like I mentioned. So we have a tool that we can break this out. I just want to call that out. And United is different because they're actually going to pay you at renewal. All right, changing again the topics to ancillary carrier updates. And I'm not going to walk through every line item here, but I am going to spend a little time on Delta Dental because they're the one carrier that's changing uh, their whole portfolio for 2021. They haven't done so in a while, and now they are. So for Delta Dental, um, as I said, they're revamping their whole portfolio. And what they're doing is they're going to offer nine PPO and or PPO plus premier plan designs. Now, if your member goes to the dentist and the dentist tells them, I only accept Delta, what they're talking about is they only contract on the PPO plus premier network. So be aware of that. Um, Delta is rolling out nine PPO offerings, basically high, medium, low, deluxe, which is plan designs, they have three choices there, and they offer two PPO plus premier offerings and one PPO offering there. Advantage, um, you know, mid-level plan designs. Again, you can choose between the PPO plus premier or the PPO. The core plans, you may not sell at all because that is only the PPO. And when we sell Delta, we are typically selling that PPO plus premier plan option. So just be aware of that, all brand new plans. The nice feature that they're rolling out is they're going to have a 3,000 annual max available in 2021. It is not available to your groups between two to four. Um, that's just the 1,500 annual max, but groups of five plus can choose the three options here. Ortho, I'm going to call out here, they offer ortho, you can have 1,000 or 1,500. It is for child ortho at five plus. You don't get an adult ortho until 25 plus. And then Delta does have really rich benefits, as we all know, so they are going to cover those posterior composite fillings and implants. Um, they've lowered their employer contribution down 50%, which is really nice. And we're excited because they finally no longer require a D9C. They just need a full census. So when you submit the group to us, it needs to have all eligibles on there, um, but we don't have to get a D9C now, which is kind of falls in line with our other standalone ancillary carriers. If you do not like these plans for some reason, or the group is already in place and they just like what they have, the group can keep their current plan design. So they can grandfather whatever existing plan designs they have. However, if the group says, ah, oh, you know, we had a, a 1500 offering and now we want to bump to a 2000, at that point, you're going to have to choose a new offering through this new portfolio. All right, this is the last thing with Delta and it's a little complex. So I want to walk you through it. Um, Delta will now offer a lot of options for dual choice and core buyout. Um, if the group has five plus, you can now do that. The first one's very easy. We know this concept. You pick one HMO, one PPO plan, offer it to a group of five plus, and move on. Very simple. Dual choice sounds confusing because you're offering two plan designs. However, the premiums are going to be identical. So you're like, why? The, what's the difference? I mean, why am I offering two plans when they both cost the same? 
Well, the situation is one plan, Delta selected the specific plans offered here. One is going to be that PPO network, but it's going to have a higher coinsurance. It's a 100, 160 plan. The other plan, the cost the same, is going to have the larger PPO Plus Premier network at Dennis, but the coinsurance is lower. Not horrible, but just lower. So basically, they're trying to say, hey, if you don't care about the PPO Plus Premier, Dennis, choose this one and get richer benefits. Or if you really love your dentist and this is all they take, take it and you still get a very decent benefit. The third option is makes more sense logically. Delta's picking the plans for you. It is only the Delta PPO Plus Premier network, but they're going to have um, different benefits and different premiums. So this makes kind of more sense logically where you're offering two plans and they cost different. Um, and the difference is the again the coverage so the more expensive plan design is going to be 190 60 plan with a higher annual max and the less expensive plan is going to be 180 50 plan with a lower annual max and then the last concept is also um Delta's is picking the plans for you but it makes more sense for you just basically choosing a core plan and a buyout plan the core plan again um I'm sorry, here you have to select my offering both the PPO Plus Premier Network or the PPO, but they have to be the same on both plans. So we probably gonna have a lot more questions on that. Feel free to type them in, we can circle back to you as well if we don't get to it today. All right, this um, won't we'll go over every little detail. You can see the concept here where all the carriers because of COVID, as I referenced, are starting, if they haven't already, to give a, a premium credit or reduction on ancillary. So for example, Aetna is going to be giving a one-month dental premium reduction when the group either uh, is new or renewing specifically for December and January. Anthem is giving a renewal pass, which is very common, as you, you'll see on these slides, and they also have a one-month dental premium credit. And then Choice Builder, this is actually um, more portfolio-related, where Choice Builder has rolled out two new plan designs, so one with Anthem and one with Delta. And they have increased their admin fees. However, they did remove their late fee, which was not so um, popular with brokers or groups. Delta Dental, we talked about them, but just a reminder that with um, the renewals from August to July, you can get a two-year rate pass. So you keep those same plans or move to the new portfolio. And then Guardian, they've had more uh, changes as well. Uh, so they redesigned their enrollment kits, something to be aware of. And they're also going to be reaching out, taking that burden of collecting those evidence of insurability forms from members that you know brokers and groups have a hard time tracking down. Guardian's going to take that over it and help you. Then we've got the renewal rate pass. Um, you choose, beware, and you do need to let them know 30 days prior to renewal. All right, with MetLife, um, same thing, renewal pass until March of 2021. Principal, UHC, again, you guys see the same thing um, continuing on, which is great that those carriers are passing on those savings to those groups and members. All right, last concept, which is large group carrier updates. And a quick reminder, and BMP sold a ton of large group and then 2016 came and we got out of the large group market for a little bit, but we jumped back in last year with Anthem and we have enhanced our portfolio now. We have HealthNet and Kaiser large group. So uh, just like small group, you guys work with us. Thank you, you're great partners. And the reason why you work with us is because we can help take a lot of work off your plates. You know, to trust us, do it right, um, and you know, help you sell more along the way. So you can send over your large group RFPs to us and we can help expedite that quoting. What we do is we take your RFP, we basically make sure that it's clean and, and so the carrier can take it and run. We convert it into the census data that that specific carrier needs. So it just saves the carrier money or time and money probably. Um, so we take a lot of work off the carrier's plate. So we just tee it up for them. Same thing with faster implementation, just like you know us for small group where we get those Anthem groups approved in a day, UHC groups approved in two to three days, for example. With Anthem, I'm sorry, with large group in general, uh, we can load the membership. Um, and so we can take basically three to five days typically off that eligibility load with the large group carriers. Um, if you still need enrollment materials, some people are still doing hard copy, believe it or not, um, we can help you with that. We can do unlimited meetings, hire interpreters, and then it is a true GA override, just like small groups. So there's no cost to you, the broker. There's no cost to the group. Um, our rate is built into there. And 
it doesn't go down if you quoted with Alice. Believe it or not, it is true, a true G override. And then if you work with us, we have a large group worker picks program. You probably know we've got a small group worker picks program. A lot of people take advantage of it for ease and our subsidy there of $1.40 per employee per month for the first year. This is a large group program. And you can see, depending on which carrier you sell through BMP, you'll get a per employee per month subsidy for the life of the case. And what's nice is this will help offset whatever costs the employer or potentially you, the broker, already paying for this group. So think it has to benefit the employee. Think um, wellness program or online enrollment or their COBRA or FSA, et cetera, et cetera. Something that benefits the uh, employee level, we can help subsidize that benefit. All right, so specific with Anthem Large Group, You'll see here that their trend is kind of low teens, more higher in the in Northern California PPO, but definitely better than it was recently. So um, that looks great. And then continuing with that trend of a strategic relationship with certain carriers, Anthem Large Group has a relationship. It is not through Canopy technically, but you're going to recognize the providers being Canopy providers. So John Muir, UCSF, Skippa, Marin, et cetera. They rolled out in the San Francisco Bay Area a blue connection EPO. And what this is, is it's gonna save money about 24% over the full network PPO plan design. Again, these are the carriers that I referenced. And you have to choose a PCP, but it's not required for referrals. So it just builds in a lot of concierge services, enhanced member tools that they've had in like national accounts and are bringing it down to the large group market of 100 plus. Lastly, um, they rolled this out in 2020, but these well-being solutions are enhanced in wellness incentives for members to pay on what they do that can earn money back. All right, Kaiser Large Group does actually doesn't have a lot of changes for 2021. This is just their basic information. Um, I will call out because just like small group, Kaiser has rolled out additional um, services to members. So that class pass I was referencing where you get membership, um, to fitness classes, the Calm Meditation app, My Strength, which is more mental health features, that is also available at Kaiser Large Group. And then it, just because it's a little confusing, we have a lot of groups that so you write with us with small group Kaiser, and believe it or not, some groups are actually growing right now. So they've grown over 100 full-time eligibles, and they want to move to large group. If they're already with Kaiser Small Group and they want to go to Kaiser Large Group, that is not a new sale for either the Kaiser sales rep or your BNP sales rep. That's actually just handled within the account management. Last slide for Large Group, and this is HealthNet. So again, for repetitive com uh, conversation, but you'll recognize it with Canopy Care HMO is with HealthNet Large Group, not Small Group. And what this is, it's those same canopy providers I referenced before with other carriers like United. And they're going to allow you to sell four different plan designs in the Bay Area. And you can get a two year rate guarantee and the prices are very competitive to begin with. Again, this is the partnership with the providers working with the carrier to figure out how can we compete, provide high quality care and save, you know, pass on the savings to the member and keep Kaiser, you know, kind of at bay. The participation is extremely competitive. So you can still sell this alongside Kaiser and you can see that the participation is 33% or 38, whichever is greater. All right, some Q4 reminders and then we'll um, look at some questions. So type in away if you have any. So again, you know these things, but we all get working fast and furious. And so it's just a good reminder. So when you're moving a group from one carrier to another, especially Calcobra size groups, Please don't forget to remind that group to call or to reach out to their current carrier and say, hey, do we need CalCobra members? Because we've all seen it happen where you move from one carrier to another, there were CalCobra members, and you get the call, say, three months later when the CalCobra member went to the doctor only to find out they lost insurance three months ago uh, because you switched carriers and never told them. So just a reminder. Also, we know that to remind people to get refills on their prescriptions, we all get those calls where it's the second day of the effective month and the owner's wife is standing at the pharmacy and can't get her refill because she's not showing in a new carrier system. So just a reminder about that. And that includes um, mail order RX deliveries as well. And then of course, once a group is approved, please 
have the group audit the enrollment, making sure that everyone's that's supposed to be enrolled is enrolled, everyone's on the right plan design, everyone's on the right network, correct PCP, et cetera. If um, anything comes up, feel free to just contact the MP. We can help straighten it out. And then, of course, last but not least, cancel a prior coverage um, since you've got the new carrier. But don't cancel too early, of course. All right, so that was what I had to present today. I'll check to see if we have any questions real quick. And I'm not seeing, let's see. No, not yet. So I'll give you time to see if you want to type anything in right now. Again, feel free to reach out to us as well. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to say thank you again for uh, your time today and your partnership with BMP. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have uh, for any additional information and definitely for any assistance in the fourth quarter. Make your life as easy as possible in this trying time that we all find ourselves in. And above all, we hope that you and your family are doing well. So I still don't see any questions. So I'll give you a quick little health tip before we close out for today. And that's just a reminder, since we are close to Thanksgiving, uh, don't forget that it is very healthy to take a moment every day to recognize something you're thankful for. Um, and that can simply be, I'm thankful that one day this will all be behind us, but you know, it can be something big, friends, family, et cetera, or something little for the day. But again, just kind of a nice thing. We all need positive things in, in our world we find ourselves in. Again, thank you for your partnership. Reach out to us if you have any questions at all. We'll be sending this presentation recording out as well. And with that, enjoy the rest of your day.